I know. Hi there, and welcome to Tuesdays with Annette. That's right, it's Home Ec with Annette. Now, I hope you've already got organised because today we're making corn fritters out of book three. Now, the recipe is here, but it's also on the website. So you can download it and print it out, and that way you can be making it with me. So I hope you've got your ingredients for today because it's always fun to be able to cook together. I love it. So it's different from Thursdays. So Tuesdays with Nets all about you and me cooking together. And as well as this recipe is in book um, three, in the breakfast section, it's also in the cooking corner too. So that makes it easier. So you can make either uh, 12 uh, fritters or you can make six, so depending on which cookbook you use. But before we start, let's talk about the winners from last week's show. Now we made the basic bolognese and the fabulous Tracy Hicks, hi Tracy, put up an awesome photo of her version. Um, Sylvia Gear is another winner and the fabulous Ingrid Krantis also won a copy. So wonder what you'll win this week. All right, so let's look at what we need because it's a cooking class. So first of all, we need to wash our hands. I like to get that out of the way first because we want to be nice and hygienic. So I'm going to go over now, use my Deterra on guard and it's that whole 20 second washing the hands. Fabulous. And when we, what we'll do next is I'll go over what um, products or you know what props you need to make the dish and then we'll go over the ingredients. So I hope you're excited about making the corn fritters with me. All right, so there we go. You might notice I'm wearing a new watch today and it was a Mother's Day present. Thank you, Billy, you're amazing. <laughs> All right, so what we need for this recipe is I'm using an electric fry pan um, it's a non-stick one and I really like using it for fritters because we don't want it sticking but you can use it a fry pan or whatever you've got. We need to um, an egg beater, I've got some cooking spray here, some measure cups, I've got my bin, my little bin here. Now also we need the chopping board, the, dis the spoon, a wooden spoon, a scraper, a good egg lifter, one that you feel really confident with. And also I need a teaspoon, a tablespoon measure. I've got my sifter ready to go, my bowl, and then we look at the ingredients. So the ingredients we need is a small onion because I'm gonna make a quarter of a cup finely diced. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We need one egg because we're gonna use one egg white in the recipe. I'm saving six grams of fat by not using that yolk. And you know what? It doesn't make any difference to the recipe by not using it. So that's important. So we've got an onion, small onion, an egg. Dried basil, really good to have in this, gives it a little boost of flavor because I've found with some fritters, they can be really bland. So we're gonna make, make tasty all the way. So we've got a can, a 425 gram can of creamed corn, some vegetable stock powder. I like the macelle because it's lower in sodium. We want two teaspoons of that. I've actually picked from my own garden, yes, some parsley and corn. Now we want a cup of frozen corn, but you can, if you wish, use fresh corn and just slice the niblets off or the kernels off uh, and you, that's fine as well. But I'm all about quick and easy. Let's get started. So are you organized? So what do we got? We've got the flour as well. Let's not forget self-raising flour because that holds it all together. And because it's still freezing, it raises a little bit as well. So I'm going to put all my cooking stuff in here because then I can grab it as I go. So first of all, what we're going to do together is we're going to do all the chopping because it's good to get it out of the way. So you need a knife, okay, sharp. It's always good to have a sharp knife when you're chopping. And so I'm going to do the onion first. So I find with an onion, the best way to get that skin off, or what would you call this, Bill? I don't know. Skin? Okay. <laughs> Is chop it down the middle. So you've taken the ends off, and now you've chopped it down the middle. And this way you can get with your knife and lift off the skin. If you've got a better name for it, post it on for me, because I'd love to know. And peel off the skin. 
It's just easier to do it that way than doing it with a whole onion. And I hope, you know, the kids are ready to get cooking here because this is a recipe that um, it'd be great for the kids to make. I mean, you, if they're young, you might want to do the chopping first uh, for them, but otherwise, if they're old enough, they can handle a knife, great. So now what we do is we're going to hold the knife really carefully here and we're going to go through, if you can see what I'm doing, go through the layers. Now you can see, oh, okay, let's get another one. <laughs> go through and I want to show you that you don't go all the way. That's what I wanted to show you before because otherwise it'll break up in your hand. Now the key is we want it really finely diced. Okay, so now watch me and then you can do it. So we go down about, so you can see I, I've stopped it about there. Can you see that? So, okay, start chopping yourself. Get your onion going. So you've, you've cut it down. Now we only need a quarter of a cup, so this is probably all the onion we need for this recipe. But as I said, we want it fine diced. You don't want big chunks of onion in your fritters. No, it will not work. So, there you go. Finally, go to the edge with your knife and really finely dice that onion. Perfect. So dice it all up. And then once it's all diced, we'll measure it out. And hopefully, we've got a quarter of a cup. Because the other bit is on the floor. <laughs> all right. I love live shows, hey? You never know what's going to happen in this Simply Too Good Crazy Kitchen here. All right, so now measure that. I might just chop up the rest of this. So you've got to just measure a quarter of a cup. As I said, make it nice and fine. And that's going to give me a quarter of a cup. All right, so next we're going to do it. So you've got your onion done? I hope so. Right. Let's start with the parsley. Now, as I said, fresh out of the garden. Don't you love fresh herbs? I think they're fabulous. Now, what you're going to do is because you're going to chop it finely. So you take off the leaves and we throw out the stalk. So just do that with all your parsley because you don't want the stalk in it. Now, if you say, I don't have any fresh parsley, I don't particularly like the dried. I'm sorry, no. It's got to be fresh. It also gives it that little burst of green, which I really like in the mix. Because it's all about colour, isn't it? It's making it nice. Now, we only want a tablespoon of finely diced. And once again, this is where a sharp knife will come in handy. It's looking great. So all those stalks, just throw them out. And now I'll show you a little trick that I do. So have you got your parsley ready? Okay, so now what I do is I bring it all together. I know chefs probably have a far fancier way to do it, but I'm showing you the Annette way. So I fold it all in, hold it in tight, and then, like the onion, really close with the sharp knife and just chop it all up. Now what I do is I hold my knife here and it just seems to hold it firm and then I just go through the parsley and chop. So get your parsley done. As I said, it really helps. Doing it like this, no. See the difference? Let me show you again. Hey, it's noisy, but it's not chopping as well. But this way, you get more strength into it and you'll get that really nice, fine parsley. Now, I need a tablespoon. So I'm going to measure it up. That's perfect. Look at that. I might just pop it in that bowl there. And I'm just going to move the chopping board over. And I'll just clean it off. Because I'm going to use it for something in a little bit. Okay. All right, so all our prep is done. I don't know, how easy is that? So let's get cooking. So if you've just joined me, hello, I'm making corn fritters from 
uh, the breakfast section in book three and also in the cooking for one or two. So what we're doing is we're going to crack an egg white. We'll crack the egg, but we only want the egg white. This is going to go away into the bin. Now, the thing is, you've got to remember the recipe is on the website. If you're saying, well, I don't have book three or cooking or two, don't worry, you're not going to miss out, okay? So go to the website. Every Tuesday, the cooking class, the recipe will be on the website for you, ahead of time, of course. All right, so get your blender. You're going to beat that for about 30 seconds, and it just helps bind it and fluff it up a little bit. Thanks for joining me today. I'm loving the Tuesdays with Annette. I hope you're enjoying them. Give me a thumbs up if you like them Tuesdays with Annette. So everybody do it, okay? So I feel valued. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna get rid of that now because I don't need it anymore. And now what are we gonna do? It's called chuck it in the bowl because that's how I roll, exactly. I'm gonna get my wooden spoon and you're gonna put everything in now except the flour. All right, so you've got your egg white ready. Now, just put everything in that you've got. So I'm gonna put my onion in, my fabulously chopped fresh parsley from my garden. Going to put in the cream corn, so we'll get rid of that. This is where I'm using the spoon that we wanted to have in it. And just get all that cream corn out. Now this, as I said, is out of book three in the breakfast section. So if you haven't checked that one out, it's fantastic. All right, now we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of dried basil. Okay, so I'm going to move that down. Just always level it out. It's always a level spoon or whatever it is, it's level, it's not heaped. Vivian said her husband's allergic to basil. Okay, Vivian, your husband is allergic to basil. Sweetie, what about oregano? Yes, oregano would be a good one. How would that work for him? All right, so now also we're going to put in two teaspoons of the stock powder. Once again, it's the flat spoon. So you don't put that in. You go across. Unless I, unless I say to you a heaped spoon, it's always a flat spoon, okay? And then in goes the corn. All right, so that's everything in there. So let me get rid of everything here. All right. Now, are you caught up with me? So what we've done is we've got all the mixture in. So there's the onion, the parsley, the cream corn, the corn, the basil or oregano, if you wish, and the stock powder. All right, so all you do is give it a stir. And I've been known as being a good stirrer in my day. So this is the easy part. So have a look at that. Look at that mix. I know, fabulous. If you don't like corn, you're in trouble, okay? Because I can't give you any alternative. So before I put the flour in, I'm actually going to just start preheating my fry pan. Now don't put it on full pelt. We don't want it to cook too hot because it burns, all right? So I'm going to do that on about three quarters maybe just to start. All right, so now our last thing is the flour. So we want half a cup. So get your, get your measure out. And please measure, don't be guessing. I'm not Jamie Oliver. I can't just pick it up and throw it in. I'm a measure girl because I want it to turn out. If you free fall, you take a chance that it's not going to come out the way it should. Perfect. Oh, just a tiny bit more. Get your sifter. In it goes. Look, you don't have to, if you haven't got a sifter, it's okay, because the Australian flour is pretty well sifted as it is. But there we go, put that over here. Now this is the last thing we've got to do before we start cooking our fritters. So you just combine that in really well, get that flour mixed in. 
Now, some people have said to me, could I put bacon in the fritters? And I go, yes, you could. You'd use the bacon shortcut, which is a, the, the, the meaty part of the bacon, and you dice it and cook it first. And this is where now I'd put in the bacon if you wanted to do it. But personally for me, I like to have it on the side so that it's a, se a separate thing but up to you. All right, so let's bring our fry pan over. I'm going to give it a really good coating. Oh, that's hot. Of the spray. And I'm going to get my spoon. Now you want probably maybe two spoons like this. I mean, you could work it out. Let me just show you. You could go down the middle like that and like that and you know that that bit there that quarter, you have to get three fritters out of it if you're worried about it. Personally, I don't worry too much. If I get an extra one out of it, I'm not worried. The key is to make sure you try and make them look pretty. You know, get them in a circle. We want our fritters in a round shape. And you'll cook these for about, probably about five minutes. This is where I'm going to turn down my heat now because I don't want to burn it. A little bit more there. I'm not going to make the whole 12 on the show, otherwise we'll be here all afternoon. But let's just um, push that to the side for a minute. Let me just show you. There's my fritters. How gorgeous do they look? They're sizzling away in here. And the key is that... I hope I remember because I sometimes forget this, but what you should do is spray the top with cooking spray and be before you flip. But we're going to cook them for probably about five minutes. But can I just show you a great way to cook corn? Because this is a cooking class, right? So we're all about corn today and I want to show you a trick. So now, if you want to cook corn, this can be a nightmare. You know, getting all this thready stuff and whatever, it's annoying, gets all over the place. So watch how I do it. So I'm going to put this, the whole thing as it is, in the microwave, in the middle, on high, for four minutes. And we'll come back to it, I'll show you the magic. Now, let's bring this back in. And I want to talk about how is the best way to have your fritters. So one of the ways you could do it is, as I say, breakfast is fantastic. People love corn fritters for breakfast. You could have the lean bacon shortcuts. I love some grilled tomato or mushrooms on the side. Let's make it fancy and fabulous. Um, the other thing that we often do is have it as a light lunch. On the weekend, it's just a bit fancy and nice to have something apart from a sandwich. And the great news is that per, per serve, each one, is 1.1 gram of fat. I know. So you know what, knock yourself out. Two or three of those in a lunch is fabulous. But what I do to make it better is for lunch or even a light dinner. Say you've had a fair bit for lunch, you want a light dinner, but you want something you know nice, is serve it with salad. Fantastic, the fritters go terrific with salad. And I love it with some mashed avocado or slices of avocado. Just be aware that an eighth of an avocado is 30 grams of fat. Uh, I mean, sorry, it's eight grams of fat. So 30 grams is eight, seven or eight grams of fat. But I also love it with tomato relish, which is another great way to enjoy fritters. And the other thing that I've done with them um, is, let me get my tosser, um, is I make them for party food and it's finger food. So I make them in just like this size, really little. And you put them out as um, hors d'oeuvres or finger food with the, you know, the, the salsa or the um, chutney or the relish. And they are fantastic for parties. And how healthy. But people love it. You pick it up, boom, in the mouth, delish. All right, so now they're ready to turn. So I'm going to turn them now. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, yes. So let's have a look. So there they are. Did I spray with the, the cooking spray? Did I? I don't remember I did. No, I didn't. I pretended. Well, you know what? <laughs> don't listen to me. 
I hope you've sprayed it before because it just helps, you know, you don't have to, but I just think it's a nicer way to do it. Now the key is we're going to cook these for another few more minutes and then we'll serve them up on a plate and I'll, do, I'll put another batch in, but I won't continue on because otherwise it'll take too long. Now, the thing is, if you want to win a copy of book three, which has got the recipe for 12 serves, or the cooking for one or two, you get to pick, which is fabulous. You need to like, share, and then in the comments, I want to see a photo of your fritters. That's right. So when you've made them, it can be any time during the week, just get them in before Tuesday, uh, because that's when I pick some of the winners. You get three, three winners, like the girls did today. Put your photo up. It doesn't have to be the best looking fritters, it's just the fact that you've made them is important because uh, this is an easy recipe. Or even if the kids, the kids like them. Yeah, they, get them in the kitchen making it and then put a photo of them with the, the recipe. Oh, that fills my heart with love. So, let's, I'm going to show you, I made some before. So here we go. So here is a batch that I made before because, you know, I like to be able to present to you the whole finished product which is the 12, and I haven't got time today to do the whole 12. But what I'll do is I'm just going to pop these. See, that one's a little bit brown, so that's why I say you've just got to be careful that you don't have your, your pan up too high. There we go. So then spray generously. Let's put another batch in. Remember, we will, you'll do this... Depending on how big your pan is, but I like to do four at a time. I find if you overcrowd the pan, it gets too hard. It's too hard to flip it, and that's what you want. You don't want to be flipping it in a difficult way, that is. Yeah. You, we don't want you flipping out, Dal. That's the thing. All right, so now I'm just going to move that over here, and you can see I've got my fritters in there. And I'm just going to leave them. And do you know what I do? I'll give you a little secret. I do this and so I know it's done. So let's go there. Now, let's get the corn. Yes, let's, let's get the corn. So let me just move that over there. I'm going to need my chopping board and my knife. I'm excited to show you all the little tricks that I've learned over the years. Turn that over. So I've got my... So you, you remember I put in high... For four minutes, I'm just going to use this because uh, you need a towel because it's hot. Okay, so now what you do is you get your cob and you cut it where past just past the base. See, that's been and chop through. That's it. And then you just squeeze it out. Hello, I know, I know, clever. So there it is, a beautiful corn cob ready to enjoy. And so, okay, I'm going to keep flipping here. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I mean, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? Corn fritters, fabulous. Now, next week's show. Okay, so Thursday with Annette, I'm in the kitchen making the chicken pizzaiola, and I've got a little special guest that's going to join me on that day, um, Thursday, so check her out. Oh, I've given you a clue, it's a her. And also next Tuesday, on Tuesdays with Annette, I'm excited because I'm doing my all-time favourite treat, rock cakes. I mean, I know. This is a great, great, great grandmother recipe, and I'm going to make it for you today because I think it's time to bring it back for the young'uns. And it's kind of, if you think, what's a rock cake? It's kind of between a scone and a... A cake really that's my best description so be here next Tuesday you know the recipe will be up on the website so you can download it get the ingredients and let's rock cake it together so thanks for joining me if you want any more tips and if you need to go to the website you know it's simply toogood.com.au thanks for joining me and I hope you, your fritters have turned out great remember take a photo put in the comments bye now see you Thursday